Hello, this is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Hardcore, Hardcore Chords and Miracles. I want to welcome you to Hardcore Chords and Miracles. Come on, God, I see it everywhere. Everybody's running scared. And everything is turning upside down. We're going to talk about should healing be repeated? Should healing be repeated? From deep inside of me and you, it's telling us that love is who I am. You and me were not that far apart. Yeah, we'll be. We've been together from the start Tell me, can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it And know that we are one Yeah, yeah Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. For Course in Miracles students, especially, and anybody else that wants to watch, want you to know we're going to be on page 22, Should Healing Be Repeated in the Manual for Teachers of A Course in Miracles, the, uh, uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace Version. Should Healing Be Repeated? That's the question we're going to share from A Course in Miracles tonight. This is John Christmas at www.johnchristmas.com johnchristmas.com singing this song if you like his music you and me were not that far apart yeah we're beating the same heart we've been together from the start Christmas at johnchristmas.com. Want to welcome you. Want to welcome you to Hardcore Course in Miracles. This is Earl Purdy. 
We're going to get down, down, down. We're going to talk about should healing be repeated. Can you repeat healing? Should healing be repeated? Should healing be repeated from A Course in Miracles? Remember, you don't have to believe the ideas. You don't have to accept the ideas. You don't have to welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you may find quite startling. You are not asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. You're not being asked to judge and analyze the ideas at all. It's the use of the ideas. It's using the ideas. Using the ideas. Using the ideas will give the ideas meaning to you and will show you that the ideas are true. Using the ideas. It's so good to be with my mighty companions. It's so good to be with you, my mighty companion. It's so good to have you in my life to help me remember the truth and to stay sane in an insane world. So I'm going to jump right into this. I'm looking at all your comments. I'm so glad that we're here together because this is a fairly long section and I want to make sure that I get through it. Now, first of all, I want to explain that my goal as a divine repetition teacher is to help people hear what the Course in Miracles is saying. I've been teaching the Course in Miracles and learning the Course in Miracles. This is my 40th year of working with it. I've been doing it full time. It's what I do in the world for over 30 years. That's all the Course in Miracles says. The purpose of a teacher, the purpose of a relationship is to save you time. And the Course in Miracles itself says, analyzing the Course in Miracles is of your ego. It's the, of the part of you that doesn't want to know the truth. So I don't analyze A Course in Miracles. I'm, this is not an analyzing The Course in Miracles. What I want to do is be the voice for The Course. I want to use The Course in Miracles definitions. I want to use The Course in Miracles uh, meanings. I want, the, I want you to hear this like you were listening to a conversation. And we're going to start out with paragraph one on page 22 in the Manual for Teachers, Should Healing Be Repeated? So it starts out by saying this question really answers itself. You know, the first thing that we need to recognize, thank you, Kim. Thank you, everyone online. I appreciate you all so much. So I want you to follow along with me. It says, should healing be repeated? Well, it says this question really answers itself. The Course in Miracles anticipates the questions you're going to have. So I also, when I do a hardcore Course in Miracles on Thursday, I hope you're following along in your book if you can, because I want to show you how the Course in Miracles is written. And it's written in such a way that you don't have to put your wisdom on the course. The Course in Miracles explains itself. It, so, healing cannot be repeated. Healing cannot be repeated. If the person is healed, what, does, what remains to heal him from? If the patient is healed, what remains to heal him from? If a person has been healed, why do you need to heal him again and again and again? If your pattern has been healed, why do you need to heal your pattern again and again and again? And if healing is certain, as we have already said it is, healing is certain. Just because you may not see the instant result of the healing as soon as you give it does not mean that the healing hasn't happened. We heard that last week. So if you really healed the situation, if the situation has really been healed, what is there to repeat? Why do you have to keep repeating a healing that has already happened? For a teacher of God to remain concerned about the result of healing is to limit the healing. For you to remain concerned about the result of a healing limits the healing. If you stay concerned about the result of a healing, then it limits the healing. If you are concerned about the healing result, that actually limits the healing. If you are concerned about the result of the healing, you have extended the love, you have extended the peace, you have extended the the healing. And if you're concerned about the result of the healing, that limits the healing. To concern, to be concerned about the result of the healing does what? It limits the healing. So what happens if you are still concerned about the result of a healing? Which means you are limiting the healing. Well, it means that it is now the teacher of God himself whose mind needs to be healed. So if you're still concerned about the result of a healing, if you've given it to God, but you're still concerned about it, then the Course in Miracles says, then it's your mind that needs to be healed. So if you are concerned about the result of a healing, then it's your mind that needs to be healed. If you're still worried about things that you've given to the Holy Spirit, if you're still worried about things that you've given to the God, to given to God, if you're still worried about the result of a healing, then you need to be healed. So instead of putting all your attention on the other person, the Course says, it's your mind that needs to be healed. And it is this, he should 
and must facilitate. So if you're concerned about the result of a healing, what do you do? You recognize that it's your own mind that needs to be healed. And it is this you must facilitate. What? You must facilitate the healing of your own mind. So you are now the patient. You are now the patient. And so you must regard yourself as the patient. When I go through this, I'm going to read it as if it's talking to you and talking to me. Okay? I'm going to make it more personal. Okay, so let's do it again, coming from a more personal level. Okay, first of all, should healing be repeated? Well, what does the Course say? It says healing can be repeated. Because if the person has been healed, what do you need to heal them again for? And if the healing is certain, and we've said there's no such thing as giving something to God and then not being healed, then the Course says, if you still remain concerned about the result of a healing, that that is really limiting the healing. So if you're concerned about the result of a healing, which means you're limiting the healing, what should you do? You should recognize that it's you that needs to be healed. That it's you that need to be healed, and you must facilitate your own healing. So you should see yourself as still the patient. You should see yourself as the person that needs to be healed. If you think you've given something up to the Holy Spirit, if you think you've offered healing and love, and it hasn't happened in the way that you think you, it should happen or as fast as you think it should happen, then the Course in Miracles says you should regard yourself as the patient. You made a mistake. So what is the mistake? The mistake that you made is to remain concerned about the result of healing. See, the Course in Miracles, everything that I am sharing with you is right in front of you and it's right in front of me. We don't have to stop and analyze the Course in Miracles. There's no need to analyze the Course in Miracles. What a Course in Miracles student needs to do is actually let themselves actually read the Course in Miracles and hear the Course in Miracles. So the Course in Miracles says, if you're worried about the result of a healing, then you are the one that needs to be healed. And you should look at it like you're the one that needs to be healed because you've made a mistake. And what is the mistake? The mistake is you staying concerned about the result of the healing, even though you think you have offered healing. If you have made a mistake, then what must you do? He says, well, you must be willing to change your mind about it. So what do you do when you make a mistake? What's the first thing you should do when you make a mistake? You should be willing to change your mind about the mistake. And that's about any kind of mistake. I made a mistake. I'm willing to change my mind about it. <clears throat> when you make a mistake, say, I made a mistake and I'm still willing to change my mind about it. What was the mistake? The mistake was remaining concerned about the result of the healing because when you remain concerned about the result of a healing, then you are the one that needs to be healed. You need to regard yourself as the one that needs to be healed. You made a mistake. You must be willing to change your mind about the mistake. And what was your mistake? The court says, well, you lack the trust that makes forgiving truly. So what is the tr how can you tell when you have the trust that makes forgiving truly? You're no longer concerned about the result of the healing. So it says right here, the teacher of God lacked the trust that makes forgiving truly, and so the teacher of God has not received the benefit of his own gift. So how are you supposed to look at it? You're supposed to look at it as if when it says, whenever a teacher of God has tried to be a channel for healing, he has succeeded. Should he be tempted to doubt that he has succeeded in being a channel for healing, the teacher of God should not repeat his previous effort. So when is it that you should not repeat your previous healing effort whenever you are doubting that you have succeeded as a channel for healing? If you doubt that you've succeeded as a channel for healing, then you should not repeat your attempt to heal. If you have tried to be a channel, the channel for love, if you tried to be a channel for peace and you attempted to doubt that you have been a good channel for love and that you've been a good channel for peace, you should not repeat your previous efforts. Your previous efforts were maximal. Why were your previous efforts at healing maximal? Your previous efforts at healing were maximal because the Holy Spirit so accepted your previous effort at healing and so used your previous effort to be a channel for healing. So whenever you say, I'm willing to be used as a channel for love, I'm willing to be used as a channel for healing, 
you have succeeded. Uh, and should you be tempted to, tempted to not believe that you have been a channel for healing, then you should not repeat your previous effort. You should not repeat your, repeat your previous effort. The Course says, if you doubt that you have been successful at being a channel for healing, because you gave your willingness to be a channel for healing to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has used your willingness to be a channel for healing. So what is it? And then the next sentence says, now the teacher of God has only one course to follow. So we only have one course to follow. And so what is that one course that we have to follow if we've already tried to be a channel for healing? The course says, you must use your reason. Use what? You must use your reason. Use your reason to tell yourself that you've given the problem to one who cannot fail. You, you have tried to be a channel for healing. You have given it to God. So you need to tell yourself, I've given the problem to one who cannot fail. Whatever problem you have, whatever problem you think you have, say to yourself, I have given the problem to the one who cannot fail. I have given the problem to the one who cannot fail. I have given the problem to the one who cannot fail. You have given the problem to one who cannot fail. If you've given the problem to the Holy Spirit, you've tried to be a channel for healing. And if you doubt that you've been a channel for healing, he says you shouldn't repeat your previous effort. The Holy Spirit accepted your previous effort. The Holy Spirit is using your previous effort to be a channel for healing. So you have only one course to follow. You have only one course to follow. Instead of trying to repeat your previous effort at healing, do you know what you should do? Instead of trying to repeat your previous effort at healing, you must use your reason. So what did it say? You must use your reason to tell yourself, you've given the problem to one who cannot fail. I've given the problem to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit cannot fail. I've given this problem to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit cannot fail. I want you to think of any I want you to think of any situation where you think you've tried to be a channel for healing and a channel for health and it looked like you weren't successful. In any area that you've tried to be a channel for healing and you feel like maybe you haven't been successful, you should tell yourself right now, I have given the problem to one who cannot fail. I've given the problem to one who cannot fail. The Holy Spirit, the voice for God, God. And I must recognize that my own uncertainty is not love, but fear, and therefore hate. So you've given the problem to who? The Holy Spirit. Can the Holy Spirit fail? No, the Holy Spirit cannot fail. So what is it that you must recognize? You must recognize that your own uncertainty, you must recognize that your own doubt isn't love. Your doubt, and f your doubt is not love. Your uncertainty is not love. Your uncertainty is fear, and therefore your uncertainty is hate. I know that sounds pretty strong, but the Course in Miracles is strong. The Course in Miracles isn't for the faint of heart. So if you think that you've given a situation or a circumstance, and you think you've offered healing, but you remain concerned about the result of it, the Course in Miracles just says that you shouldn't repeat your previous effort. You should see yourself as the patient. You should see that it's your mind that needs to be healed if you don't have the trust in God that makes healing possible. So you need to recognize that you have given the problem to God. And you must recognize that God cannot fail. You must recognize that your own uncertainty, your own doubt is not love. Your own doubt is fear. And so the Course says at that point, your position has thus become untenable. What does that mean? It means you're offering hate to someone you offered love. But offering hate to someone you've offered love, the Course in Miracles says that is impossible to offer hate to someone you've offered love. And the reason why, it's, why it is impossible to offer hate to someone you've really offered love is because having offered love, only love can be received. Only offered, having offered love, only love can be received. If you really offered love, only love can be received. And don't ever forget that love is the answer. Love is the healing. Don't ever forget that the Course in Miracles is only talking about love and it's only talking about fear. 
The Course in Miracles is only talking about love, and the Course in the Course in Miracles is only talking about fear and love. That's the only thing that it's talking about. How to get rid of the blocks to love. How to change our perception. How to change our interpretation of things so that we can see things from a space of peace. Because the Course in Miracles teaches that until you have peace of mind, you can't hear the voice of your inner guide. That you can't really hear the voice of God as long as you're full of conflict, fear, and doubt. So having offered love, only love can be received. Then it says in paragraph 3, it is this that the teacher of God must trust. What is it that the teacher of God must trust? What is it that you must trust? You must trust that having offered love, only love can be received. One of the most powerful things about the Course in Miracles is that it makes as much sense when you read it backwards as when you read it forward. Let me give you an example. It says, it is this that the teacher of God must trust. What is it? Having offered love, only love can be received. And then the Course in Miracles tells us that our position is untenable if we are offering hate to someone we offered love and if we are offering fear to someone we offered love. And the Course in Miracles told us that we should see that our own uncertainty that the Holy Spirit will heal the situation is not love, it's fear. So it says we need to tell ourselves that we've given the problem to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit cannot fail. The Course says whenever you try to be a channel for love, whenever you channel, want it to be a channel for healing, actually you have, have actually succeeded. And if you don't believe that you've succeeded, he says you shouldn't repeat your previous effort. He says that it's because you lack the trust that makes forgiving truly. And if you lack trust in God that makes forgiving truly, he says then you have not received the benefit of the gift. And if you lack trust in God, he says you have made a mistake and must be willing to change your mind about it. I'm reading this backwards. And then it says after that, you are now the patient. You must regard yourself as the patient because you are doubting the result of the healing. So it's now your mind that needs to be healed. And then the Course in Miracles says to remain concerned about the result of the healing, that limits the healing. And if the healing has really happened, why does it need to be repeated over and over again? If you've been cured of a toothache, why do you need to have your, teeth, your tooth worked on over and over and over again? The once that a healing has actually happened, it doesn't have to be repeated. So I want you to hear what the Course in Miracles is saying. If you offer a healing, and it looks like that healing has not been received, if you're concerned about the result of the love that you've given, if you're concerned about the result of the answer that you've given, then it's your mind that needs to be healed. And this is what you must facilitate. You must see yourself as the patient if you still doubt the outcome of the healing that you tried to give. You've made a mistake. What is the mistake? You did not trust that the Holy Spirit could heal the situation. And so the Course in Miracles says that's a lack of trust. And so that, and it's trust that allows you to give truly. And so you haven't received the benefit of your gift. Whenever you try to be a channel for healing, whenever you try to be a channel for love, whenever you try to be a channel for help, then you have succeeded. If you doubt that, then you should not repeat your previous effort. You gave it to the Holy Spirit. You wanted to be a channel for healing. You let the Holy Spirit use you as a channel for healing. The Holy Spirit used you as a channel of healing and so used it. So you must tell yourself that you have given this problem to God who cannot fail. You have given this problem to the Holy Spirit who cannot fail. You must recognize, you must recognize that your own uncertainty isn't fear your own uncertainty is not love. Your own uncertainty is fear. But having offered love, having really offered love, only love can be received. You must trust that if you've only offered love, only love can be received. It says this is what is really meant by the statement, the one responsibility of the miracle worker is to accept the atonement for himself. So do you know that your one responsibility is to accept the truth for yourself, to accept the love for yourself? to accept the healing for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept the correction of error, the undoing of fear. These are all definitions of the word atonement. For yourself, 
Your one responsibility is to accept this for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept the course, the truth, the correction of error, the love for yourself. So if you are looking at it as if the course in miracles is your path, then your one responsibility is to accept what the course in miracles is teaching for yourself. Accept what you are hearing for yourself is your one responsibility. The teacher of God, that is you, you are a miracle worker because you give the gifts that has you have received. So if you give the love you've received, if you give the truth that you have received, then you are a miracle worker. Yet you must first accept the gifts before you can give the gifts. So you must accept the love of God before you can give the love of God. You must accept God's love before you can give God's love. You must accept this truth before you can give this truth. You can't give the gifts of God if you have not accepted it for yourself. So don't be trying to fix someone else if you have not allowed yourself to receive the truth, if you have not allowed yourself to accept forgiveness, if you have not allowed yourself to receive love, then you can't give it to anyone else. You cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. Your one responsibility is to accept this for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept the truth for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept your innocence for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept the love for yourself. Your one responsibility is to accept the atonement for yourself. He says, yet you must, he says, yet the teacher of God must first accept them. You must first accept the love. You must first accept the gifts. The teacher of God need do no more, nor is there more that the teacher of God can do. What does that mean? Well, it means by accepting healing, you can give it. You can give it by accepting it. By you accepting your healing, you can give it. By accepting healing, you can give it. By accepting the love, you can give it. By accepting the peace, you can give it. By accepting the joy, you can give it. By accepting the abundance, you can give it. By accepting the truth, you can give it. The, court, the next sentence says, If the teacher of God doubts this, doubts what? That by accepting the healing, he can give it. Let the teacher of God remember. So if you're full of doubt, then this is what you need to remember. If you have doubt, do you know this is what you need to remember? If you are full of doubt, if you're full of doubt, if you have doubt, if you have doubt, let the teacher of God remember who gave the gift. So who is it that's giving the gift of healing? Who is it that's giving the gift of love? It's the Holy Spirit. It's the voice for God. It's love. You need to remember who gave you the gift that you're giving. When you're in doubt, you need to remember who received the gift of love. It was you. And who did you receive the gift of love and healing from? You received the gift of love and healing from the Holy Spirit. You received the gift of love and healing from God. Let you remember who gave the gift and who received the gift. That's how your doubt is corrected. By remembering where do your gifts come from? Where does your healing really come from? Where does your healing really come from? Where do your blessings really come from? You need to remember that. If you have doubt, the Course of Miracles says in the next sentence, he thought the gifts of God could be withdrawn. The mistake that you might make is that you may think God's gifts of love could be withdrawn. That was a mistake. Thinking that you could ever lose the love of God is a mistake. To think you could ever lose God's love is a mistake. To think that you could ever lose the gifts of God, which are the gifts of peace and joy, it's a mistake. It's a mistake. It's a mistake if you ever think you could lose God's love. If you ever thought you could ever lose the love of your creator, it's a mistake. Do you know that you're making a big mistake if you think you could lose God's love? It's a big mistake to think that you could lose the creator's love. You were created. You didn't create yourself. That which created you. You can never lose the love of God. You can never lose the love of your creator. Hear what the Course in Miracles is saying. Hear, just let yourself hear what it's saying. It says the teachers of God thought, the teacher of God thought the gifts of God could be withdrawn. That was a mistake. 
but hardly one to stay with. So you make a mistake, don't stay with it. What is the mistake? Believing that you could lose the gifts of God. Believing that you could lose the love of God. That's a mistake. It's just a mistake. It's just a mistake. But don't stay with that mistake. Don't, don't keep on thinking that you could lose. You can never lose real love. So you could just as much apply this to the love that you think you're receiving from another person. You can never lose the love of someone that really loves you. Do you know that you could never lose the love of someone who really loves you? Do you know that there's no such thing as losing the love of someone who really loves you? There's no such thing as losing the gifts of love. That's the difference between love and what's not love. Anything that's coming from love is permanent. Anything that comes from love, you can always count on. Anything that comes from love is safe, it's peaceful, it's loving. So the Course in Miracles says, believing that the gifts of God could be withdrawn. Do you know that the Course in Miracles says, that was a mistake, but it's hardly one to stay with. And so the teacher of God can re only do what? The teacher of God can only recognize a mistake for what a mistake is and let the, st and let the mistake be corrected for him. So you can only recognize a mistake as a mistake and then let the mistake be corrected for you. You can only recognize a mistake as a mistake and do what? Let the mistake be corrected for you. What was the mistake? The mistake was believing that the gifts of God could be withdrawn. Believing that the healing could be withdrawn. That's the mistake. You don't have to analyze this to figure out what the mistake is. It's right here. The teacher of God thought the gifts of God could be withdrawn. That was a mistake and hardly a mistake to stay with. And so the teacher of God can only recognize a mistake for what it is. And do you know that the once you recognize a mistake for what it is, I love how it says, and let it be corrected for him. So do you know that you just need to let your mistakes be corrected for you? Say, I'm willing to, I'm willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I'm willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I'm willing to allow the mistake to be corrected for me. I'm willing to allow a mistake to be corrected for me. I'm willing to allow a mistake to be corrected for me. Oh, I needed to hear this. I'm willing to allow the mistake to be corrected. I'm willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I'm willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I am willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I am willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected for me. I am willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistakes to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. You are willing to allow your mistake to be corrected. You are willing to allow your mistake to be corrected. You are willing to allow your mistake to be corrected. You are willing to allow your mistake to be corrected. I am willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I'm willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. I'm willing to allow my mistake to be corrected. Do you know that one of the most difficult temptations to recognize is that to doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms is a mistake in the form of a lack of trust? Do you know that one of the most difficult temptations to recognize, what is one of the most difficult temptations to recognize? That to doubt a healing because of the continuous, to doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing a symptoms is a mistake in the form of lack of trust. Don't doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms. Don't doubt a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms, because that's a lack of trust. And as such, doubting a healing because of the appearance of continuing symptoms is an attack. Usually, it seems like it's just the opposite. 
I know at first it can seem unreasonable to be told that continued concern is co attack. Continued concern is attack. Continued concern, staying continually concerned is an attack. I know continual concern uh, and continued concern has all the appearances of love. Thinking that you're always worried and always concerned, the Course in Miracles says that has all the appearances of love, but it's really attack. Yet love without trust is impossible. There's no such thing as saying, I love you, but I don't trust you. I love you, but I don't trust you. I love you, and I don't trust you. Love without trust is impossible. It's impossible to have love without trust, and it's impossible to have trust without love. And doubt and trust can't coexist. You can't have doubt and have trust at the same time, because doubt is the opposite of trust. Doubt is the opposite of trust. So doubt and trust cannot coexist. Hate must be the opposite of love. Regardless of the form hate takes, hate is the opposite of love. Fear is the opposite of love. Guilt is the opposite of love. Attack is the opposite of love. Hate must be the opposite of love. Regardless of the form it takes. Doubt not the gift. Doubt not the healing. It is impossible to doubt its result. I'm not going to, in other words, I trust that each and every one of you are going to be healed by the Holy Spirit, no matter what it is that you are going through. No matter what blocks to love you have, no matter what anger, guilt, and grievances and sense of separation you may have, no, no matter what worries, what concerns you may have, I trust that the Holy Spirit in you is going to give you the gift of healing, that you are healed and that you are going to be healed. So my job is to see you the way you're going to be seeing yourself after you do your process of healing. So I'm not going to doubt the result of the healing. It says this is the certainty that gives God's teachers the power to be miracle workers. So what is it that gives you the power to be a miracle worker? What is it that will give you the power to be a miracle worker? What is it that's going to give you the power to be a correct perception truth worker? It says it right here. This is a certainty that gives God's teachers the power to be miracle workers. For God's teachers, love's teachers have put their trust in God. So the power, so what gives you the power to be a miracle worker? Put your trust in God. Put your trust in love. Put your trust in the creator. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in the creator. It will give you the power to be a miracle worker. What is it that will give you the power to be a miracle worker? What will give you the power to be a miracle worker? Put your trust in love. Put your trust in God. Do you know that the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that's been given to the Holy Spirit for resolution is always self-doubt? Do you know that the real basis for doubt is self-doubt? Real, the real basis for doubt is doubting yourself. So if you have a lot of self-doubt, then you have a lot of doubt. And the Course says the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem, the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that has been given to God's teacher, the Holy Spirit, for, resolu for resolution is always self-doubt. And that necessarily implies that trust has been placed in the ego, the illusory self. For only such a self, an illusory self, can be doubted. So the Course in Miracles says in the basis for doubt is self-doubt. It's not really ultimately God you're ultimately doubting. It's yourself that you're ultimately doubting. But that would mean that you are forgetting that you aren't the healer, that it's God that's the healer. It's the Holy Spirit that's not, that is the healer. You are not the healer. You are channel for healing, but you are not the source of healing. So any doubt that you have is really doubting yourself but it also would mean, don't you think, that you're taking on a responsibility that's not your responsibility? The Holy Spirit is the healer. God is the healer. Love is the healer. The universe is the healer. Not your ego. Not your little illusory self. Not the part of you that's full of fear. Not the part of you that's full of doubt. And it says right here that the real basis for doubt 
In paragraph 5, it says, The real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that has been given to God's teacher for resolution is always self-doubt, and that necessarily implies that trust has been placed in an illusory self, for only such a self can be doubted. This illusion, what, illu what illusion uh, of having self-doubt? This illusion can take many forms. Perhaps you feel a fear of weakness and vulnerability. Perhaps there's a fear of failure and shame associated with a sense of adequacy. Perhaps there is a guilty embarrassment stemming from false humility. Perhaps you have a fear. How, how can you tell when you're placing your faith in your ego? How can you tell when you're placing your faith in your false self? First of all, you start to doubt whether or not God has been able to do the healing. And the Course of Miracles says that the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that you've given to the Holy Spirit is self-doubt. So what does that mean? He says, well, you put in your faith in a you that's not really real. And, and you, how, do you, how are you able to tell when you're putting your faith in a you that's not really real? Well, he says, you have a fear of weakness. You have a fear of vulnerability. You have a fear of failure. You have a fear of shame that's associated with feeling inadequate. Uh, you have a, uh, uh, a false humility uh, that gives you a guilty embarrassment. Uh, the form of the mistake is not important. It's, it's not important whether you feel in the fear of weakness and vulnerability. It's not important that you have a fear of failure and shame. Uh, it's not uh, important that you uh, have a guilty embarrassment that's coming from false humility. It says, the form of the mistake isn't important. The form of the mistake is not important. The form of the mistake is not important. So what is important? What is important? What is important? What's important is only the recognition of a mistake as a mistake. Recognize a mistake as being a mistake. What is the mistake? The mistake is trusting in your ego. The mistake is trusting in your human self and not your divine self. The mistake is in trusting in your ego instead of trusting in God. But that's just a mistake. It's not a sin. It's a mistake. It's just a mistake. Wow. Did you hear me? It's just a mistake. So what's the real basis for doubt about the outcome of any problem that you've given to the Holy Spirit to solve? If you've given something to the Holy Spirit to solve and you're full of doubt, then that doubt is ultimately self-doubt, which means that you are trusting in your ego. You're trusting in a self that is not truly your divine self because that's the only self that can be doubted. How can you tell when you are trusting in your ego? How can you tell when you're trusting in your false self? How can you tell when you're trusting in the illusory self and not your divine self? The way you can tell is that you're afraid you are weak. You will be afraid that you are vulnerable. You will be afraid that you can fail. You will have some shame. You might have a, a sense of shame that comes from a sense of feeling inadequate. Uh, you may have a guilty embarrassment that's stemming from a false humility. It doesn't matter which one of those things you are doing. The Course in Miracles says what matters is that you recognize it's a mistake and that you recognize a mistake as a mistake. That's what you do. You recognize a mistake as a mistake. So then it says, well, what is the mistake? The Course in Miracles, you don't have to analyze it. You don't have to analyze it. If you follow along with me in the book, you see that all I'm doing is focusing on right, right on what's in front of us on the page. So what is the mistake? What is the mistake that you need to recognize? What is the one mistake that you need to always remember is a mistake? What is it? What is the mistake that you must recognize as a mistake? The mistake is always some form of concern with the self to the exclusion of the patient. What is the mistake? Me being more concerned about my, me being just concerned about myself. Me just looking out for myself only. The only mistake is me being concerned about myself to, to the exclusion of the other person. That is the mistake. That is what prevents the healing. Me not realizing that my healing is your healing. My healing is your healing. Your healing is my healing. Your healing is my healing. Your happiness is my happiness. 
your healing is my healing. My healing is your healing. The mistake would be for me to be more concerned about myself than also concerned about you. In other words, the mistake is always some form of concern with the self to the exclusion of the patient who is the other person. What is the mistake? The mistake is a failure to recognize the other person as part of the self. So what would be my mistake? It would be me failing to recognize that you are part of myself. I'm part of yourself, you are part of myself. The, the, the failure to recognize you as part of the self, that is the mistake. That represents a confusion in identity. So when the court says you have identity confusion, it means that you don't realize that you are a part of everything you see, that everything is a part of you and you are a part of everything. The biggest mistake you can make is thinking that you're separate and disconnected from everything and all that is. If you think you're separate from everything and everyone, then you have made a mistake. And do you know that when you make that mistake of thinking that you are separate from everything and everyone, then you're going to be concerned about yourself to the exclusion of everybody else around you. So a person who doesn't know the truth is a person who is concerned with themselves to the exclusion of everybody else. That means that that person doesn't recognize that everybody else is a part of them. And if you don't recognize that everybody else is a part of you, then you have a confusion in identity conflict about what you are has entered your mind. So if you have conflict about what you are, you are everything. You are everything. You are everyone. You are all that is. You are the universe. You are God. By that I mean you are part of all that is. You are part of all that is. If you don't know that you are one with everything and everything is one with you, if you're more concerned about yourself to the exclusion of everybody else, then you are confused about who and what you are. And so that means conflict about who you are has entered your mind. And it says you have become deceived about yourself. So what does it mean to be deceived about yourself? The Course says you're deceived about yourself when you think that you are not everyone else and everyone else is you. When we don't realize that we are part of each other, then we are confused about who and what we are. If we don't recognize we are love, then we're confused about what we are. And the Course in Miracles says, and you are deceived about yourself. And why are you deceived about yourself? It says you're deceived about yourself because you have denied the source of your creation. If you deny that you were created by God, if you deny you were created by love, if you deny that you were created by God, then you are deceived about yourself. If you think you were created, you if you think you were created by anything else other than love, if you think you are anything other than love, if you think you're anything other than everything and everyone you see, then the Course in Miracles just says you are deceived about yourself. And do you know you are deceived about yourself because you have denied the source of your creation? You've denied that you were created by God, and when you deny you are created by God, you're deceived about yourself. When you deny that you are me and I am you and we are all connected with each other, then you are deceived about yourself. So, it says next, if you offering only healing, if you are offering only healing, if you're only offering healing, if you're only offering love, do you know that if you are only offering love, do you know that if you are only offering healing, you cannot doubt? So if all you're offering is love, then you don't have any uncertainty. If you really want the problem solved, what do you do? If you really want the problem solved, what do you do? It says, if you really want the problem solved, you cannot doubt if you really want the problem solved. If you are certain about what the problem is, you cannot doubt if you are certain about what the problem is, you cannot doubt. So what is doubt? Where does doubt come from? It says, doubt is the result of conflicting wishes. Doubt is the result of conflicting wishes. So doubt is the result of conflicting wishes. 
So how do you get rid of doubt? How do you get rid of doubt? If doubt is the result of conflicting wishes, then how do you get rid of doubt? Well, the Course in Miracles says, be sure of what you want and doubt becomes impossible. So how do, how do you make doubt impossible? How do you make it impossible for you to doubt? How do you make it impossible for you to doubt? Be sure of what you want. If you're sure of what you want, then you have no doubt. That's what being sure of what you want means. It means you have no doubt. So that means if you are offering only healing, then don't have conflicting wishes about that. If you really want the problem solved, don't have conflicting wishes about that. If you are certain about what the problem is, and we said the problem is being concerned with, the, with yourself to the exclusion of the other person. It's, it's being concerned about the outcome of healing and doubting the healing because the symptoms still remain. In that, in that section, he told you exactly what it is that you're doubting about. And, and so you need to see yourself as the person that needs to be healed. If you're the one that's full of fear and doubt, and so you're the one that needs to accept the truth for yourself. And you're the one that needs to recognize that you've given the problem to God and God cannot fail. And that your doubt is you believing that your ego, that you personally are the one that's responsible for the healing. So you should not even repeat your previous effort to heal. You need to tell yourself that I've given this problem to one who cannot fail. That I've given this situation, this circumstance to one that cannot fail. Be sure of what you want and doubt becomes impossible. All right, so we're going to pull the, uh, in just a minute, we're going to pull the message, the card, the miracle card for our group tonight to see what the final message is that the Holy Spirit wants us to hear as a group. I'm so glad to have an opportunity to share this with you about how he is healing repeated. Uh, I'm a full-time teacher and I teach a course in miracles. And if you would like to make a financial expression of appreciation, then go to my website, earlpurdy.com, P-U-R-D-Y, earlpurdy.com, and I truly will appreciate that. If you want to use Venmo, then use my email, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. I also do one-on-one -on -one personal sessions. I'm an astrologer and a numerologist, and I do full full-on, powerful, soul, purpose, astrology, and numerology sessions, as well as what I call clarity sessions. So I do clarity sessions. And if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, where I bring all of my learnings into our session, then go to my website, earlpurdy.com, look under the tab that says clarity sessions, and it, uh, and it explains my clarity sessions in detail and you can self book a session with me right there online. And I have over, I have hundreds of free videos for you to listen to and audios. And you can also watch my videos on YouTube as well as on my Facebook page, which is the Earl Purdy page, which is where we watch Facebook live on the Earl Purdy page. At one o'clock PM Mountain Time on Sunday, at one o'clock Mountain Time, I do a Course in Miracles on Facebook Live in front of a live audience. and want to invite you to watch that. And on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, right here, right now, I do Hardcore Course in Miracles. Whew. And it's on the Earl Purdy page. Please share these videos, please. I would appreciate it if you would share these videos. Okay, so let's see what the, let's see what the message is from spirit to us from the cards. I'm going to pull a card randomly and see what the message is that we are supposed to hear as a conclusion for tonight. Okay, let's see what it is. <clears throat> the peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in me now. 
the peace of God is shining in me now. Say that to yourself. The peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in you now. The peace of God is shining in you now. The peace of God is shining in you now. The peace of God is shining in me now. Why wait for heaven? Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. Those who seek the light are merely covering their eyes. The light is in them now. The light is in you now. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. Enlightenment is but a recognition, not a change at all. The peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in you now. The peace of God is shining in us now. The peace of God is... Come on, mighty companions, let's say it. The peace of God is shining in us now. The peace of God is shining in me now. The peace of God is shining in us now. The peace of God is shining in us now. The peace of God is shining in us now. The peace of God is shining in us now. Mighty companions, just remember, you've given all your problems to one who cannot fail. Whenever you're in doubt, stop and tell yourself, I've given my problem to the one who cannot fail. The peace of God is shining in me now. Mighty companion, I'm so glad that we had this time to focus in on A Course in Miracles. Listen to this, watch this video at least three times before the next time we see each other. And share it with everyone. You are such a blessing to me. I look at every comment that you make. I feel your presence when we're doing this lab. We are the mighty companions. We are a spiritual family. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I love you. I'm Earl Purdy. And remember, may the course be with you. May the course be with you.